Bienvenido, damas y caballeros. Welcome back to Freeform Radio on that Freeform Network. Remember, you can follow us on Facebook at Freeform Network, on X, the same Freeform Network, and send in those questions and suggestions, ffnquestions at gmail.com. But again, this is Freeform Radio. I'm one of your hosts. My name is Daniel. With me today is Andy. It's all good, Andy. We want to thank you for listening, and uh, we're ready to roll, man. And we have Noel. Hey, Noel here, doing the best I can, getting over this cold. So, see how it goes. Oh wow, that kind of sucks. You know, I've been really lucky that I haven't really got sick uh, much at all this this year. So, yeah, I, I I don't know why. I don't know if it's the new vitamins I'm taking, but everything's been rocking so far. Watch, I just jinx myself. I'm going to get like this nasty <laughs> flu or cold. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. I, I I just got out of church, and um, it's a compost day uh, today at, in my village. So we rushed over to go pick up compost because they end at 11. And I'm like, I'm not going to have enough time after the podcast. So I went, picked it up, and you could smell the not rotten food but you could smell that you know it's like old food that's turned into dirt again uh smell uh but yeah hopefully i don't get sick from that but yeah it's that time of season uh and why don't we start it off with andy andy uh fill us in on your week man uh it looks like you were doing some squirrel hunting (laughs) yeah i mean that i guess that's what you want to call it uh so Earlier in the week, we had, uh, like, late last week, my wife was, like, out in the garage, and she says, oh, I think, because we keep, we have, like, a little cabinet there with food, and she left, like, some peanuts out, and she's like, oh, something went through the peanuts, and I'm like, oh, I'm thinking, like, another mouse during the pandemic. Uh, In the garage, we had, like, we had a, a week or two of mouse issues. And I bought traps and like I killed maybe in uh, like three days, like maybe like four or five mouses and then like it stopped. So I'm like, I got the traps out. So my wife's like, oh, something went through the peanuts. So I'm thinking it's the mouse. And um, I put a trap out and I checked it, uh, you know, put it in for overnight in the morning, came in and he got a mouse. I'm like, sweet, I'm done with this. And I left the trap out and nothing. Then, like, uh, this was uh, Monday. Then around two uh, Wednesday morning, I go out to the garage. I was getting um, some waters, and I saw this fucking squirrel, like, on the top of the garage door, and I went to, like, this hole on the edge of the garage. I'm like, fuck me. I'm like, oh, that explains that, so... I went and bought an animal trap. To, I talked to you about it during lunch at work, and um, I'm like, "How much are these fucking things, right?" And like, uh, I was like, thirty bucks. Um, they had some cheap ones, like half the price, but I'm like, I want to catch this thing. Um, so I went into Harbor Freight. They had a medium sized one for thirty bucks. Then I watched a video on like what to do or what are they like. Um, Told me to wear gloves because you don't want your scent on the on the cage. Wow, really? <laughs> yeah, so I put some uh, trail mix and some peanuts uh, that night, and then nothing. I went to work, and I got them, and then I came. My wife's like, "Oh, there's something in the trap." So I'm like, "I got you, motherfucker." <laughs> and then, uh, so I I got home late. I went in. Uh, we bought a house, so I had a take some stuff to the house to drop off and uh that's when i decided to take the mouse uh or the mouse the squirrel i'm like where am i gonna let this thing go my wife's like you're just gonna let it out in the backyard i'm like hell no this thing's gonna try to get back in the house so she's like what are you gonna do with it i'm like i don't know so she saw me pick up the cage and just threw it in the back of the truck and that's the first time i didn't know squirrels made these noises i mean i knew always knew they made a noise but i was the thing was making noises uh i didn't know if squirrels can make it was like almost like a shriek let's see replicate it andy I, I, it like? I can't man <laughs> the thing was one kind of weird one it was running towards the locked door 
it just ran head first like multiple times and i'm just thinking like damn man like this thing's crazy and then um like a uh, raccoon crazy like it's got the, the um, rabies the rabies man <laughs> nah. But it was pretty aggressive, so I was just like, shit. Um, kept making the noises, and I loaded up the stuff. Then I went to, I live by the Fox River where I live, and there's like a big forest preserve over there. And then um, I was like, all right, let me let it hear. And then like once I got it out of the truck, it like started running circles and crawling in the cage and the trap and then uh i open because you it has like this lock mechanism and then you put like this bar across the door because it was pushing the one side is lock uh or spring loaded and then the other side the quick release is like you just run like this l shape maybe eighth inch bar <laughs> across it and like it would push up against it. The only thing holding it was that bar and like uh, this this lock, almost like a keychain lock. I don't know how else to explain it. And then it just kept pushing it and pushing it because you could open it. You could be like a little gap. I'm like, man, it's growing dumb. And notice like this side, it's easier to open up. And then uh, once I opened it up, it just it bolted and it went to like that forest preserve. And I was like, damn, well, that's over with, right? And then I went to the house, and then I'm like, I was going to go buy a stair. And then it started, like, a, we had, like, a fucking monsoon that night. My wife's like, what'd you, when I got home, what'd you do with it? I'm like, I threw it into the river. <laughs> and then uh, she's like, you killed it? I'm like, no, I didn't kill it. Like, I let them over there by the, uh, the foresty area. And she's like, but it's raining. I'm like, I'm sure I'll manage and then I'm like, she was more worried about the damn squirrel, man, than uh, than me, I guess. And then, uh, um, so yeah, I mean, I did it. I'm like, I'm done with this shit. And then uh, Saturday morning, I walk out to the garage and I see another fucking squirrel. Like, damn, this motherfucker made it back. So I have a trap out there. Um, so I got to cover the hole where it's coming in. I think eventually this one is not really coming down to where I have the trap. Um, so I'm going to have to, I'm thinking I'm going to have to put it like in the attic of the roof and shit or of the, the garage and see how that goes. And like it comes out of, and it hangs out by the rail of the garage door, um, the, the spring, uh, the tension spring, but it won't like, I don't think it's coming to the floor. Maybe it's time to bust out that 22 to do a little target that's practice, right. that's, man. That's what's coming up next, so uh, I got to cover that up. I got to go buy some, like, plywood or something, and then uh, I know where the other hole, I think I know where it's coming in from the house. I got something for that, and then I'm going to try to see it will come out, you know? Man, I, it, uh, a theory, is it the same squirrel, and it knows the trap, so it's like, nah, you're nah. not going to get me again? I don't think so because this one, the one that I caught, I think was the one that was jumping onto like the the like cabinet where she left the the thing. This one I don't think did any of that because um, it's always in the same area uh, where it walks. It's like there's this this like little rail that just walks there all the fucking time. And the area where I, the other one was eating, I was like, it's like spotless. I cleaned that whole area up after we, with, after we trapped them. And uh, it's spotless over there, you know? And I'm like, it's not coming all the way down here. So that's why I'm like, I'm going to have to go up there and put the trap, I'm thinking. Wow. I wonder if it was like a, a husband and, and wife. That's what my wife thinks. I'm yeah. like, nah, they're just fucking around there and um I, I i exactly they are fucking around there yeah and they're, they're trying to create the family up in there i it might be like you 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 bought this new house i bet you the dad squirrels just like hey honey check out this new spot they got food here we got this warm spot and then you go and break up that family man it's cool man rents is due i'm all, i'm, I'm uh, the 99 percent, you know or the one percent and uh, they're the 99 percent. i just threw them out but I think it was a female because I didn't see no nuts on it. So, um, let's see how it goes. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's just like a fucking nuisance. Uh, and part of me is like, should I just throw like some poison up there and just let them rot? <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, like, uh, I was hoping to catch the other one by now, but it hasn't. So I don't know what to fucking make of it. Yeah, who knows? I I I would assume that you'll you'll catch it. Usually, peanuts is the trick for squirrels or for mice. You'll you'll catch it with that. No, yeah, I mean that's going on. Uh, my wife's just like paranoid. Um, um, but let's see how it goes. I, I think I'm 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 pretty sure we'll catch the other ones. Or I'm gonna start. I'm gonna try to force them out. So I'm gonna lock up all that other shit. Like uh, close out that holes. And I think eventually it's going to have to come down because it's not going to be able to be easy to get in and out, you know. I, I think uh, that that's what pre- preventing him from coming down. And uh, we'll see how it goes. I'll keep everyone updated or if you got any suggestions, uh, let me know at ffnquestions at gmail.com. And then I'll keep everybody uh, updated on on. Uh, what happens with these squirrels um but yeah man they're fucking uh the one in the cage or the trap was uh <laughs> i think it was pretty it was wound up definitely i was like this probably thinks thinking it's like i'm fucking done for right you know? yeah probably thinks that you're gonna drown it in in the river uh i think some other animal's gonna get it so that's what you get for fucking living here rent free yeah for sure <laughs> And then uh, the other thing I, I just want to throw opine on is my uh, all this college protesting yesterday. The 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 news calls it pro Palestinian. Um, it's been uh, like in every campus uh, the last week or two is the time of this recording, and I guess the the chancellors of the universities and colleges had enough, and they're throwing all these people out. Um, and then you saw videos of them not letting uh, Jewish students get into class, and pe- they're protesting like uh, the war, which yeah, nobody likes wars, and I get it. Uh, but I think what people got kind of uh, the the chancellors how they were preventing, I mean, students uh, of the Jewish uh, faith uh, like blocking them and. Stuff like that. And I think they started going into buildings. That was the other big no. No, no. And I think they're just, they they, they had enough. Uh, I mean, people got fired, you know. Um, uh, some of the presidents and chancellors, I think, got, uh, they really didn't denounce it. But now people, I think, are pissed. And uh, some of them got in trouble, and people asking them to resign how uh, how this was being handled. I think the worst ones were in New York, and the other big one was in California. Um, all that got cleared out this week, which was kind of weird. Uh, they just like, uh, we had enough of this, clear it out. And it seems like a lot of America is like uh, against this. I mean, from what I see, a couple of the news networks are for it, but I, I think a big majority. Uh, uh they're not for it um everything that i read but um have you guys any thoughts on that or what do you think uh, do you know of it i know like almost all of them got cleared out they finally started going into the south colleges and a lot of the students in, in the south are like uh giving them crap they're making it difficult for them i it, to me i got a question man uh why is it be call, why is it being called a protest and not an insurrection? Because isn't the difference a protest is you're stating your disapprovement with authority or a problem that's occurring, but insurrection is when you bring violence and you take over the authority of whatever government or whatever uh, uh, institution that's in place. I, that's what I find kind of weird. They started using it for the the capital thing, which I. I don't agree with, but still, okay, you labeled that correctly. Why aren't they labeling when they took over that school and they kicked out all the, the teachers, all the administration, they barricaded themselves in, they started making demands that they needed to yeah. be fed by the by the school. Their, response, uh, their human rights to be fed. Right, to be fed. I was just like, uh, okay. Uh, to me, I, I think protest is... Um, 
it's covered by the the constitution it's your right you should be able to voice any disapprovement so it's definitely uh, something that's protected and i think you should be able to do it but when you're disrupting uh traffic when you're disrupting commerce when you're disrupting uh education uh, i think it's a, a line past go do your protests voice your concerns march schedule whatever you want to do but i, I think once it starts uh, disrupting uh normal people that have nothing to do the the college students have nothing to do with the war so by you being there and disrupting the, the school especially during graduation graduation is coming up in a couple of weeks uh i i don't i don't understand it yeah i mean it's it, it's pretty like i get the students are voicing their concerns they don't like war nobody really likes war i mean uh, we're old then and like the people before us that we must have seen i mean we're in our 20s when 2001 happened uh and I think ever since then, there's been a fucking war, and we're like almost, we're out, you know, we're 46 now, and there's been a shitload of wars. Like it seems like America's been at war f forever. I mean, um, I think a lot of people just had enough of it. I mean, um, the thoughts, no, or did you know about the the campus protest? Uh, as the news calls it, pro-Palestinian protest. Yeah, no, nah, you know, it's it's complicated, man, and. And I do agree with Daniel, like, you know, 100 percent. It's your right to protest, but it, it shouldn't impede other people's right to education, right to, you know, be on your on your way, you know, traveling. Right. So if you're on the road and you're on the highway, people shouldn't be protesting on highways that can cause accidents. Uh, that could kill somebody too as well. So stuff like that is irresponsible. And at the end of the day, man, what are you really accomplishing when you do that? Uh, you're saying free Palestine. What what can we fucking do to free Palestine? We're not going to do shit, dude. Like we're, we're here suffering in our own stuff. You know, I, it, it sucks for the people that suffer other places. We're all eating this shit sandwich, man. Like it, it, it is what it is. And so it it sucks that um, it's it's also dividing people. And uh, I, obviously, man, people just jump on bandwagons, and it it is what it is, dude. I, I don't really know much what else to say. It's your right to protest, but definitely you shouldn't impede other people's right to, you know, education, right to travel, stuff like that. So that's all I gotta really say. Yeah, and like to top it off, again, it's war. I mean, nobody likes war. This one, uh, I guess President Biden is, is giving his unwavering support for Israel, Hamas, and, and you know, the, everybody forgets October, what they did in October of last year. Uh, it just gets brushed over, and now they're like, uh, the Israelis are doing much worse. Um, and then the U.S. Congress... Uh, is giving tons of money for the Ukraine war and all this. And meanwhile, the average American uh, can't get shit. Everything's expensive. Housing's out of control. Rent's out of control. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll leave it at this. They got money for all the... Uh, as Tupac said, they got money for wars, but they can't feed the poor. And then what happened in Hawaii, that fire... They gave them like a thousand bucks or a couple thousand dollars. I forget the amount. And people lost everything. Or and, a toilet paper for the Puerto Ricans. Yeah. And like, this is fucked up. And these people are Americans. And, you know, it, it's just sometimes uh, I think the, 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 the swamp, as Trump calls it, they got their shit all messed up. And hopefully, uh, you know, they get their, their shit together and we'll see what happens. Um, but uh, let's switch it over something. Uh, Noel mentioned earlier that he is, you heard him, he sounds kind of sick. He's getting over a cold. Seems to be like that return that a lot of people I talk to have been sick lately. And like they, they mentioned they're fighting a the cold. So what, what happened, man? The, uh, you were petting a monkey or something? <laughs> you think you got it from somebody at work? It's gonna be like an outbreak over here. Nah, it's um, yeah, people at work, man. It's since I think February, there's been people sick at work, and I've avoided it really well, dude. Like I usually keep up on 
vitamins, all that, eating healthy and not eating out food. I actually haven't eaten out in like a month, man, like outside food and shit. So I've been trying to do pretty good to uh, stay healthy because unfortunately I don't really get too many sick days, man. That's one of the things. Uh, I have a good job. I love it. I'm grateful and everything, but we don't really get too much time off. Uh, so unfortunately I had to use like half of my sick time off this last week. Um, my birthday, I celebrated it over last weekend and on Saturday, you know, I did a good amount of celebrating, had some vodka. Uh, I made some burgers here at the house because I didn't really want to eat anything outside or pizza or anything. Uh, and then the next day, like I slept like trash. I didn't, I didn't sleep good at all. It was super hot. It was muggy. And then I just didn't sleep well. And I'm like, man, like we need to get this AC going. And uh, later on that day, that, that Sunday, which is a week from now, um, I just started feeling really bad, like uh, just a headache and aches. And I, I attributed it initially to, you know, overeating the day before because, like I said, I had burgers and they were, you know, kind of greasy and some bacon on it and all that, some poppers. So I figured, oh, maybe it's just too much grease and too much vodka, you know. But then that, that Sunday night, it really started kicking gear. And I'm like, all right, I'm definitely not going to work Monday. Monday, I felt even worse, man. I want to say Monday, Tuesday was probably the worst of it. Uh, and it's just lingering now. Uh, and it's like presenting new symptoms as I go, man. It's just weird. Initially, it was, you know, body aches, headache a lot of malaise, like just tired, super tired. Imagine you run a marathon and then you have to run another. That's how it felt. And I was just like, dude, like, I don't know what the fuck like is, is going on here, but uh, just stayed hydrated and all that. And throughout the week, I took a couple of days off and I was able to work from home remotely uh, pretty much almost the rest of the week. I finally went back to the office on Friday, uh, which is just a couple of days ago. And thankfully, you know, I, I was good enough to go, but my, my, like, I just didn't still, I still didn't feel a hundred percent. Even now, like you can hear my voice, it's still lingering. You know, I, I got a cough here and there, uh, which I'm holding back right now, but I, I feel it there. Um, but it, it's getting better. It takes time, man. It's one of those things you you you'll start to feel more energetic and because of that you you want to get back to life you want to get back to your routine and doing whatever it is you know work out or you know go for a, a you know bike ride or whatever it is do something right but i still don't feel at that point yet where i'm going to be able to work out maybe this next upcoming week i'll finally be able to do a little bit some weightlifting maybe light cuz yeah it's just it's still there and it's just yeah bummer you know <laughs> just get tired quickly right that's like what everybody yeah. tells me yeah they they feel all right but once they start doing something uh they just get tired quickly yeah i'd be curious if it, if if it's covid because i know this latest strain uh a lot of people that have gotten it had said that it just makes them feel real lethargic and real tired all the time no it's definitely not covid it's, it's common cold man um, it was a lot of sneezing, coughing, a lot of mucus blowing my nose. I like went through like two things of like tissue paper. Uh, so it was a lot, it was a lot of like mucus stuff, which is not COVID man. COVID was definitely different than this. Um, in, in ways it was worse and in ways it wasn't, you know, that's how it goes. I would say that this, uh, it's just. What sucks the most about it is just how long it lasts. Um, it's so it's already seven days in, and it's just lingering. So while while I am recovering and I notice that I'm recovering, it's just gonna take some time to get back to a hundred. Uh, I would say by like next week I should probably be a hundred though. Thank God, man, it's getting better because when you get in the middle of it, where it's like it's at the peak or you're right after the peak, and you start feeling better. You're like, I want to get back to it, and you just, you can't, and that's, like, disheartening, because you're like, man, like, I really am sick still, and you don't want to be, like, you, you're ready to get on with life, but you're, it's just not time, it's just, you got to give it the time, you got to, you're, you're forced to be patient, essentially, uh, my mom's sick now, unfortunately, so, and she's not a patient person, so it's more hard for her, but, uh, she, she's, uh, She's a trooper. She'll get through. 
Um, Fortunately, that when you're older, I think it just takes longer. Um, especially like like during the pandemic, I feel like people weren't getting sick. If you didn't have COVID, people weren't really getting uh, sick. But when they got sick, it was like these super colds that just wouldn't go away. And I think that's that's here to stay. I got really sick in January. I had the flu. I, I thought it was COVID. It was the flu. And it like, it kicked my ass. Like I couldn't stop coughing. I, that was probably like the worst part of it. And I had a really bad fever. Yeah, I didn't have a bad fever this time around, but I had a mild fever for like two, three days where I would notice my head was warm and I'd feel cold and I, I just felt tired and, and malaise and my eyes would burn and it, it just felt like a fever, you know, and I had some weird dreams too, dude. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't, I was just like, what is this? It, man, it was the most bizarre stuff ever, but um, yeah, at work, just like you said, man, like these colds are lasting because at work, there's this guy who I think he was sick for a month now, man, like not like super sick. It's just like a lingering sickness where he, he just coughs every day at work. Every day he's coughing. Not a lot, but throughout the day, you'll hear him. You know, it's, it's audible. And uh, another coworker, a female, she was sick pretty much the whole month of like from like mid-February to like mid-March. And coughing, and so I'm just like, dude, these these colds are lasting long. <laughs> <clears throat> One thing I will say is, is their diet's not on point. Um, I'm not gonna make I'm not gonna make jokes about them, but yeah, I always like, I always criticize how people's diets are at work. Like they'll have a sandwich and chips and shit like that. I'm like, what kind of nutrition is this, man? Like. No wonder these people are always getting sick. Like, they just eat, like, trash, dude. And um, I don't know. So I'm just going to do me, dude, just to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm already getting better. I feel like if I keep it up, you know, keep hydrated and eating healthy, I'll be good by next week. And then hopefully I, I really only get sick, like, once a year, man. And this last year around this time, it's same. it's pretty much history repeating itself. I had, I got sick like this last year. I had to miss like three days of work, and it, it is what it is, man. It's and it's inevitable when you work in an office, you're around people, you know, you're gonna get sick. So, uh, I'm just looking forward to getting better. And you know, one consolation, I guess, is I had more time to just, you know, un, like sit back and just watch stuff. And uh, so, you know, going, moving on to what I was doing this week, uh, I was watching Fallout. It's a show on Prime. Uh, based on the video game series and season one dropped on prime i want to say about like two three weeks ago and so i finally finished it this last week and it was really good i enjoyed it um i i kind of waited a little bit on it uh other people were like talking about it at work and you know my brother Efren was talking about it and i was like fine you know i'll, I'll finally watch it and it, after like a couple episodes in it hooks you in and it, it's an interesting show um I don't know a lot about the video games, but I played a few of them and um, I, I enjoyed it while I played it, but I don't know like the in-depth every detail. So when I watched the show, I was just relating some star stuff of it and it was interesting, but I guess some people are saying that it's not a hundred percent like, you know, word for word. And I'm like, ah, I'm not a purist, you know, so it's whatever. Um, same thing with a uh, halo I finished season two. Uh, it's also based on the video game series. It's not a co carbon copy of the show, of the game series. It it does take liberties. It does change things. It does its own thing. Yet both of those shows, Fallout and Halo, very entertaining, high production value, good acting, uh, good CG, good effects, good story of what they're showing you. It, it draws you in. I, I have nothing but high praise for both of those. Um, I would give them both about an 8 uh, out of 10. I do recommend Fallout. Um, yeah, I, re I recommend it for anyone who's a fan of like sci-fi. And the very first episode, I will say, drew me in because of how insane it was um, to see like, like a realistic uh, depiction of armageddon of the apocalypse of just uh 
massive um, attack of nuclear warheads uh, to see like L.A. because it shows you like the Hollywood Hills and you see like the the city from the hills and to see all the, the explosions. I was like, man, dude, if that's how it would be in real life, that'd be terrifying, dude. So it really draws you in. Um, and then obviously the show itself is, is pretty crazy. Like, you know, the concept of it, if you know about Fallout. So um, you guys ever played those games? Fallout, Halo, anything? Uh, I've never played the Halo games, but I'm actually playing Fallout again for like the third time. I've never beat it, the um, PlayStation games. But I've always played it for a ton of hours. Same thing with like Skyrim. I've always played it for a ton of hours, but I've never actually beaten the game. So I'm not saying that I'm going to beat it this time, but I have gotten as far as I've ever gotten in a Fallout game. So I'm really enjoying it. They came out with a PlayStation 5 patch for the game if you had it already. So since I had it already, I, I downloaded the patch and that's what I'm in the middle of right now. I uh, don't got much more to say about the game itself, but uh patches okay but the game is is tight it's all it's is it was always good to me nice, yeah i nice. just know halo i know it was um uh, they had a lot of publicity for it when uh paramount plus uh got relaunched or whatever name change and um the fallout i've been seeing clips of it in uh on uh Google and stuff on the the shorts and, and and Facebook reels. A lot of people are starting to upload clips of it, and it looks kind of tripped out because it uh, every time I see, it, I'm like, oh, that's that video game one, <laughs> that video game. Uh, so yeah, it looks interesting. I I might I might check it out. I don't know yet. Um, yeah, the show it? definitely looks good for sure. Yeah. I I'm thinking of definitely checking that one out uh, when I get a chance. <laughs> Yeah, no, I recommend it, guys. It's uh, it's not even a long show either. It's like eight episodes or so, um, and yeah, like the the production's there, dude. And you, you got the guy from Twin Peaks, um, what's his name, McLaughlin or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's in it. Uh, you you got some notable actors in it, so you're you're gonna recognize some faces. And uh, overall, I I really do think the the writing was good, and it, it's got a good um momentum for season one season two is already green lit so we'll see how that goes but uh shifting it over to you daniel uh it looks like you got actually i've been interested in watching this uh, i haven't yet but jared from subway catching a monster uh did you end up checking this out yeah i saw it i think it was netflix the one that put this out uh or hulu i can't remember which one but yeah man i i you know, almost everybody knows what happened with Jared, that he was caught watching um, little kid porn and stuff like that. But, man, I didn't know how crazy this thing got. Um, and the documentary got into it, and it was nutso, man. I, again, I didn't know how bad he gotten, but I guess it started early on in his fame. And since he got to be the face of the company and became so... Uh, rich to I guess to uh, compared to me, <laughs> he got rich and he got famous and he got well known everywhere he went. He was really used as the face of Subway, which made it where he was in a lot of contact with with children, um, and it just made his issue, his problem that he was having, even worse. Where uh, he he couldn't control himself and it became out of control. There was a, a lot of kids that got affected, and it was really sad, man, to see that a, a person like this can go hidden for so long. Uh, you said you haven't seen it in a while. Have, have you seen this documentary, Andy? I have not. I've heard about it, but let's take it back a little. Jared, I mean, when he, this happened, it was like, it was like, he was like one of the last true, like, when you saw this guy, you thought of Subway. Like, when you see certain people, I think right now the last one, not like something like Flo. When you see Flo, you think of uh, Geico. Um, when you see certain characters almost, but I, Jared, you know, was a real-life person. 
Flow is um, uh, progressive. Yeah, or progressive, excuse me. Like a person and like right. a spokesperson. It, it, there, He was up there. I mean, I think he hosted like when Raw had co-hosts for a while. He was a host of Raw. Yeah. Um, he was doing the rounds on radio, TV, especially around the new year. You know, people trying to lose weight. He would do all this stuff. And he was like a poster boy for Subway because he lost all that weight by eating his sub and walking or whatever the hell he did. Um, but, yeah, I mean, to, that downfall was pretty big. And uh, he was up there for a while. And then when stuff started coming out, because I think he was married, right? So I don't know how much. I never really revealed how much money he made. But I'm assuming the documentary goes into that. and. They toured him around. He's doing like public speaking and all this thing, all this stuff. If I remember correctly, yeah, yeah, he definitely uh, it, it toured around, uh, went into different countries. I think it was Taiwan that they mentioned that his addiction uh, to children became out of control because it was a little easier for him to go unseen and people not wow. catch him. But yeah, man. This guy, he he was truly a monster. And when you see some of the stuff that he did, uh, other people that he kind of put into his spider web, his assistant, uh, he he signed an assistant that was also into this, and then his assistant uh, wife became part of this like triangle of you know just debauchery, man. It was just it was really his network. <laughs> yeah, dude, it it was uh, Alana doesn't like watching stuff like this. She doesn't like watching when kids, you know, get abused and stuff like that. And it was one of those documentaries where it's difficult to watch of uh, being a parent to just think that children are being abused in this way. So, yeah, it was it was a good documentary just because I didn't know a lot of this. You know, you you heard about it, you know, his fall from grace and that was about it. I didn't really know too many details, but after watching this it it was kind of heinous what what he did and what he got away with. Yeah, that's why I said like when it comes to stuff like that, um, it's rough. Like I did see Quiet on the set. I know you, I think you watched it, Noel, right? Or I forgot which one of you. I did watch it. It was. Um, I think it's messed up because they keep getting away with it, and you're always like, why don't they get caught? And I think I don't even remember why he got caught or what happened. But yeah, it's just this. It's uh, yeah, it's sad. And like you said, it's uh, it. They always seem to get out of control because they got an, away with it for so long, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy, like how he was so unassuming too. Like you know, he he had like the, everyone fooled essentially. I mean, he was huge. I mean, uh, he had commercials and. They would, I remember every New Year's, he'd come out pushing the sandwich and like showing people who lost weight and all that goofy shit. And they kept introducing healthier options and and he did a ton of them. Like, I, I just remember he was on TV all the fucking time. And then um, when you saw, you saw that guy, you're like, oh, he's pushing Subway. Like, he did nothing else but Subway. Like he fucking milked that thing till, till the end, and they never really recuperated from that. That now they got like football players and shit, but it's not the same. Yeah, it 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 is crazy. It's like you said when you saw his face, you thought of Subway. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, really sad how everything went across. Um, but flipping it to something else that was kind of interesting. Uh, not sure if you've heard of this, Noel, because you're not as big of a gamer, Andy, but uh, Tunic, um, it's a game that I recently beat, and this was a game that was different. It was totally different from anything I've ever played. Um, ha have you heard of it, Noel, or does it sound familiar? Uh, no, no, this oh. one doesn't. Okay. Uh, this Tunic game, it's kind of like a QT graphically. Um, has kind of like that um, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, like that Super Nintendo kind of vibe going on, but with like updated, prettier graphics, like a lot of particle effects and stuff like that. It's a really nice looking game. But the premise of the game is you wake up in um, like a beach 
and the game doesn't tell you anything. It, it doesn't even tell you how to run, how to jump, attack, nothing. And as you progress through the game, you start finding these pages of a manual, and it's the manual to the game on how to play it. And as you find these manual pages, it starts showing you certain like imagery, but some of the text is in a different language that you can't understand. So certain you could see key phrases like jump, uh, but then maybe you can't see what the square button does. It's in a different language. And as you progress through the game and you learn more, the language starts becoming clearer and you start reading more, you start understanding more, you start finding more pages. You find page 40 of the document and you find page six and page six is out of context because you only have page one. And it was so interesting just playing the game. And, you know, it, to be honest, it's not really games that are up my alley when it's frustrating because it did get frustrating at a few times because it was so difficult and you would die a lot. Uh, but it was interesting to try to progress and get more pages to understand the game more. And by the end of it, it was totally cool, man. I, I really dug the game. It was a uh, very interesting, um, there was like 40 pages to the manual and I found everything, but three or four of them. Um, and it almost got me to go back and try to find those, but I, it, it was very difficult. I, and I don't, I don't really dig those soul born games where you die a lot. So it was difficult in that sense, but really, really interesting to not know how to play it. And through your progression from the game, it taught you how to play it and what everything meant. Yeah. I'm looking it up now. It looks actually really cool. So it, this came out in 2022 said it's like a metroidvania type and yeah it does look really colorful man i may have to give this one a try yeah it was it was definitely very like qt graphics wise but um uh very combat heavy uh really cool game i i really dug it and it is kind of like metroidvania where you get new powers and it lets you progress to different areas that you couldn't before so it's a, a really a mix of a bunch of genres. If I had to give it like a 16-bit mix with Soulborns, with, uh, like you said, Metrovania. So definitely very interesting game. Uh, challenging at times, but uh, very rewarding at the end. So Tunic, I kind of recommend it, but it's difficult. Uh, if people uh, don't like a huge challenge, it might be uh, difficult to recommend for you guys. Uh, but the last thing I want to talk about really quick is I, I ran across this uh, last week. I was driving, and I, I'm sure everybody's um, dealt with it before, where you're driving and there's two lanes converging into one. But I, I ran across it again, uh, like I mentioned just a few days ago, where there was a guy that was driving in the middle of both lanes so that traffic could not go around him because maybe he got frustrated that too many people were going around him on the right side and merging in in front of him. But the guy literally stopped or was driving in the middle to prevent both lanes from passing him. And I just thought, I'm like, man, it's, I understand that the frustration, but Jesus, man, for you to take it upon yourself to be like, no, nobody's getting in front of me anymore. Everybody behind me is going to stay behind me. <laughs> and it was just something that I, I'm like, what's got to be the mindset uh, of this? And have you guys even seen this before uh, out while driving? Maybe he was drunk. You ever thought of that? Or you think he was just like, I'm blocking everybody. I, I guess he could have been drunk. I mean, it was after work. So it was like around five, six ish. So maybe it was an after work bender. I don't know. But <laughs> 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 my guess is he just had a bad day. Yeah, I, I see that all the time. Not the two lane splitting, but like just bad driving in general, including that. And it, just people are impatient, stuff like that, and just upset about whatever it is that's going on in their lives. And they just take it out of people on the road. And I see a lot of just bad drivers in general, man. I, I've noticed more recently, like, it's just the, the road is full of just bad drivers. And uh, usually when they get out of work, uh, you know, we're moving at a good pace, and I'll notice sometimes 
there's drivers that drive obnoxiously slow for no reason. And I think it's like the to get like I think they get their jollies off of like pissing off the people behind them. Really? So, so you think people drive slow on purpose to upset people behind them? Yes. Yeah. Oh, really, man? And, I and they'll I kind of trust. Yeah, like yeah. they'll notice that that someone's driving slow, and they're like, "Okay, we're, we're, I'm going to match the speed of the slowness." So now everyone behind me has to wait, and like if they see that there's a space, they'll they'll uh, and, and you're going to try to pass them, they'll raise their speed so that you can't pass them anymore. Yes. Oh my yeah, god! That's how you know they're they're fucking with you when they speed up. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it, to me, the it, is the driving slow the speed limit, and everybody else is speeding. Or is it that she's driving below the speed limit? So I would I wouldn't call it speeding if the speed limit's forty, and right. every everyone and there's space like there's there's no right. need to you can go fifty and you're perfectly safe and you're in control of your vehicle. Right. I, I, don't, I don't I don't yeah I don't consider that speeding right. I I think we could all go fifty and we'll be fine on this really it's like a route it's like a. Uh, a highway, but it's not a highway. You know what I mean? The word I was looking for is the legal term is the flow of the traffic. Or the yes. highway to hell. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was just going with the flow of the traffic, man. Right, like, right. So, so they'll be going leader. like 30, dude. They'll be going 30 and a 40. And I'm just, I'm like, why? Like, I just don't know why. Like, there's space in front of them. There's cars way, way ahead. And I'm like, we're over here, way back here. And we can catch up to those guys going 50 and then match just the flow of traffic at, at that point. But no, we're back here doing 30 because this guy just doesn't care. to. He doesn't have anywhere to be, right? So not that I'm in a rush, but if I have space, I'm going to close the gap. I always feel like that's the best way to drive is you close the gap. You don't go slow and create more traffic. <laughs> right. No, I, I hear that, but... Uh... I usually drive at, at the very least the speed limit, but now that I'm out here in in the the country land over here, a lot of the speed limits are like 45, 50, 55. There's hardly any 30s, anything 35. Everything is like super high speed, and I I drive a hybrid man, so it it's not going to 60 miles per hour in like five seconds. So I need a minute to get up to that speed. <laughs> Uh, uh, but it, so I sometimes get the feeling I'm like, I wonder if people behind me are upset because it's taking me, you know, like 20 seconds to get up to the speed limit. I think they but, are. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I never. Like, man, fuck this. Right? It's tree hugger, man. Get out mm-hmm. of my way. Uh, so I understand that. Uh, but to me, I don't purposefully drive slow to prevent people or to upset people. I just drive at the very least the speed limit but i agree with you if the entire flow is going five ten over the limit then i might get i might go that same speed with the rest of the traffic but um yeah it, to me uh, to slow down and then to do that speed up because you're going to try to go around them kind of thing that is a douche move i i don't know to me it's like if, if you're so slow you don't want to go fast that's fine but you should let traffic go around you um, so they can pass you up and, and start moving on with the rest of the quicker traffic. Hell no. I forgot what state it is that it's illegal to drive in the left lane for too long, like unless you're passing. Right. And over here, it's like the Wild West, but I don't give it a crap. Like they'll just drive slow in the left lane and then the middle and the right's going faster. And it makes no sense. The opposite of the way it should be, but you know, I've just learned to deal with it, man. I just uh, I put on some good music and just like, whatever, man. We're just going to go where we're going to go. Yeah, to me, I use the left lane as a passing lane. Uh, the only time I stay in the left lane is if I'm, like, on the ass of the guy in front of me. Like, we're all driving, you know, 70 miles per hour kind of thing. But if if cars are coming up behind me and they're accelerating and getting closer to me then i'll shift over to the right to let them pass and then Mm -hmm. as soon as there's a break then i might shift back over to the left so i can pass the people that are in the right lane but Mm -hmm. yeah i i i try to use it like that because you're right there are certain states where the left lane is only for passing you're not supposed to stay in it so i don't know man uh there, there is a bunch of crazy drivers out there 
Um, and uh, speaking of driving, that kind of goes into our article of the week. So, Andy, I found this article, man. It's from uh, your famous uh, website here, uh, thehuffpost.com. Nebraska, <laughs> Nebraska women, a woman, uh, it was just one, uh, accused of using pump glitch to get $27,000 worth of gas. So this lady, Dawn, uh, she's 45. Allegedly, she had estimated to have stolen over 7,000 gallons of gas at this pump in uh, pantry station over a six month period. Now, uh, this lady's from Nebraska, and I guess she found a way to uh, work around the system. It has like some kind of reward system. And from the name of the pump place, a uh, pump and uh, pantry, I'm kind of thinking it's like a small mom and pop kind of like thing. A regional thing, I think. Oh, is it? So is it yeah. like an Amico BP, but it's no, in Nebraska? It's not like or? That. Yeah, it's only like available in that area or something. Like you don't see too many of those out here. Like a Petro's, but it's over there. Casey's and yeah, BP okay. and all that shit. Yeah, Petro. All right, cool. Well, uh, yeah. So, um, they had came out with a rewards thing or had a rewards thing, and she found a glitch that if you scan your reward card twice, that the 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 gas pump would go into a demo mode and just yeah. allow you to <laughs> pump gas without having to pay for it. So the lady did this forever for, uh, what did they say, six, six months? And she just kept racking it up. And what's funny is that she started charging yeah. other people, like, hey, Andy, you want to fill up your gas? I, I could fill it up for you. Just give me, you know, give me 20 bucks and I'll fill up your tank kind of thing. Yeah. And she was making money on the side. So uh, I, I'm thinking, to be honest, if something like this happened to me, I don't know if I could, with good conscience, steal all this gas, it, it would have been really tough, even though right now with the, the time, inflation, the cost of everything going up, if times were hard, okay, I, I could see some shenanigans, but yeah, man, to start making money on the side. And then once the software glitch got corrected, she tried to sell the discount card to somebody else. Uh, so when the cops finally arrested her, she didn't have the card anymore. She had sold it. But yeah, I I just didn't know if anybody had run across something like this where uh, something happened and you got an extra discount that you weren't supposed to be getting. Well, what's funny, the card belonged to the man that he's deceased now, right? Right. Uh, according to the article. And then she figured this out. And then, yeah, I think what really got her in trouble is that she admitted to selling it or whatever she was doing, like making money. I think that's what's really going to hurt her because she kind of fucking knew. I think if she would have just kept using it for herself, I think she would have been fine. But uh, six months, 27000 I guess. I mean, uh, it's pricey, man. So if you're using premium, you know, who knows? But, um, yeah, <laughs> it's just... Uh, it's the American way, man. You got to take advantage of the the, the glitch, uh, and uh, and you see more and more stories where banks do errors, uh, error in favor of uh, some uh, customers where like fifty thousand and people yank the money out and all this goofy shit, and then they have to go to court because it's a process to get all that money back. So she took she wrote it until she could it, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I've heard of like uh, bank um, errors where In your favor, they put, they, yeah, where they put it like an extra zero on there and then people, yeah, take out the money. And they close the account. My sister works in a bank. She tells us that happens more often than not. And people yank the money and they close the account. She was telling me that something happened where um, they did an error to some customer in California and the guys, they got a hold of him. He's like, Oh, I'll return the money. And they never heard from him again. <laughs> and, uh, they're, they're, I think the lawyers found them and they're going to sue them or something, but that error is going to cost that. And it's a smaller bank, like a lot of money to get that money back, you know? So that's what I'm saying. Like this regional one, 
with this with this lady in the gas cart. I'm assuming it's something regional, so they might have a, a have a bigger impact on them. Hence the point. I think if it was another bigger two like Emico or BP, I don't think. I mean, I'm pretty sure they would do something, but I don't think they would be like going all crazy, like the, the arrest and all this. I think they would have probably suited or something. Yeah, it's it, it's just crazy to to think that she she started like working the system even to make more. Like, would you have been just content with you know, all right, I'm getting free gas. I'm gonna get free gas until this glitch gets fixed. Just say I don't just, know, and just be that, and just kind of play <laughs> dumb and be like, well, I didn't know. I I put my credit card afterwards, or I put my I waved my card because it's got the chip thing and I thought it was paying you know I didn't know I didn't really pay attention the thing about my, be- my truck has you need 35 gallons to fill it up what do you think Danny yeah I mean <laughs> that's a lot of money I, yeah. I think you, I think you would have noticed on your bank account and been like oh this is kind of strange how come I, I always have an extra hundred dollars every week you know because I'm not <laughs> filling up my tank yeah, it's just I'm saying it's it's um and I, being in Nebraska, I'm guessing they must have had a pickup truck or something. So uh, hence why she was selling it on the side. Um, but yeah, I like the word is demo mode. So I'm wondering like if the other gas stations have something similar. But the thing is, the they had a like an actual rewards card, right? You had to swipe twice. So now they make you just enter a number. So I'm thinking now, is there like a fucking code you press to get that demo mode and like some of the rewards places for some of these other gas stations? I I don't know if you remember, Andy, one of our high school buddies, uh, a gentleman that owes you some money uh, <laughs> for living in your uh, dormal style for a few, uh-huh. a few months. He told me once that there was a way to trick the gas pump into giving you free gas and he had to like this elaborate concoction that you just had to press this button flick the switch three times to turn the gas pump on and off and it would give you free gas and i'm like all right whatever and and i never did it i i didn't know if it was like those kind of things where you start up um uh like an urban myth or something urban myth exactly It, to see how many suckers will will go try it, <laughs> but I was just like, man, uh, anything to get some free gas from this guy. Well, the, I mean, there's always those things where people tell you, like in, back in the day with the payphone, if you do all this crazy shit, you can make a right. call. If yeah, you do thing. this, uh, with the like, so we've always heard those rumors, but you always think like, this is so fucking stupid. How how can it be true? But now with like the age we live in, people record everything. I'm pretty sure there's shit out there where you see like how do you get demo mode in and uh, at the gas station. I'm pretty sure there's videos like that, or, or maybe they haven't gone viral enough. But I, I, I'm guessing there's something like that out there. And like, um, <clears throat> yeah, the hacks. You know, now they call them hacks, right? That that's what it, I'm talking about. And like people order food and like I want it with this and take that, and there's only like a small fee or zero fee, like. Y'all seen the Chipotle hacks where they don't charge and people got like these monster burritos and shit. And they just get like one meat and they don't even double meat the fucking thing. Yeah, it, it's kind of crazy the way people cheat the system. Hey, have you seen anything like that, Noel? Um, Something similar, yeah. There, I mean, there's always, you know, tricks that you can employ to, to save on stuff and get discounts and all that maybe not free free right but like you know discounted from what it would normally be you know i've seen stuff online for when you buy items Uh, i actually have used it a couple of times myself you know and it's perfectly legal it's nothing wrong with it it's just you you find a way to get the maximum discount for the items you're getting and uh, i've done that for like physical media the blu-rays i get and stuff like that what this lady did with the gas, I think she got a little too greedy. Uh, I actually would have had her back if she wasn't so greedy about doing the stuff on the side that she did. If she was just getting gas for free, I'm like, hey, you know what? This corporation's probably making so much money. 27000 is not going to hurt them. They're going to be fine if that's what it is, right? If it's a mom and pop and they're struggling, then, you know, that's a different story. But, 
and more than likely they're making bank you know it's a gas station selling gas on a regular basis and we've seen gas prices they shouldn't be this high dude we have more than enough reserves it should be a lot lower so they're they're making their money on us don't don't even kid that dude i i don't have the backs of corporations um we're, we're out here struggling so you know if you can get a little something for free you know more power to you but um, yeah. I'll leave it at this real quick. Like with the, you're hearing more and more stories where uh, the self checkout, the stores are getting rid of it. Um, right. They were making people ring up their own shit. So what did people do? They were saying like, oh, they're buying like big screen TVs and diapers, and they're ringing it up as bananas or potatoes and all this goofy shit out. And like everything, there's always out there people scheming to take advantage of of the system and uh, people a lot of people got upset when the self-checkout stuff came out and now walmart admitted it and some of the other stores we're losing a ton of fucking money on this so we're gonna we're gonna discontinue it and um you know and it just doesn't people are always out there scheming that's i guess that's what i'm saying yeah look at yeah. look at um red lobster man they had a file for bankruptcy because that endless shrimp man people too many people just sit there all day taking advantage of these promotions <laughs> and that only came out like once a year and like we would go on and just like the crazy wait time for fucking red lobster you know for the endless scrimps yeah man it's tough out there man you gotta you gotta find whatever ways you can obviously you know stuff that's legal right you know it, it's a big risk man like this lady what if she does jail time dude you know that's that's rough uh 47 years old or what 45 whatever it was and possibly facing jail time or whatever and yeah then, and then has to pay that money back 30 grand almost it's like yeah that's that's rough so it's definitely not worth the risk sometimes but i mean it's hard out there man so i i understand that because um companies man they don't care about you dude like they they want to make more and more and more money they are the the -hmm. epitome of greed and i don't know if you heard about the trying to raise the uh minimum wage i think it was in washington or portland or something like that like somewhere out west and yeah so they try to raise the minimum wage like 20 20 Mm -hmm. bucks or something like that and immediately like a lot of business was lost like Fast, they stopped ordering DoorDash and all sorts of stuff started happening, dude. So, um, co- corporations like when they raise minimum wage, corporations are just gonna raise their prices, and people are just not gonna shop it anymore. It's, it's the way it goes, man. Like corporations, they're not gonna try to lose money. They're not in the business of losing money. So, yeah, it is what it is. I don't have any real big sympathy for corporations, but um, you know, what can you do? Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, well hey guys I think that does wrap things up for today Uh, thank you so much for joining us on the Freeform Network if you're not already please follow us on Twitter at FFR Podcast well it's called X now but it's still FFR Podcast if you have any questions or suggestions the email to drop that is FFNQuestions at gmail.com for Freeform Radio my name is Noel and we have Daniel Yes, sir. I'm about to go take advantage of Taco Bell's five tacos for five dollars. Can you believe that, Andy? Man, you gotta go That's in there, man. Deal, you just gotta use dude. the app. Heck yeah, man. Nah, go but you can do right better now. than Taco Bell, but come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> and we got Andy here. It's all good, Andy. We want to thank y'all for listening. And uh, uh, the the day this is being recorded is uh, Cinco de de Mayo. Or I've also called Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> so. How are you talking about it? You guys have a good day and enjoy it. But remember, we got to work tomorrow. Yeah, get yourself those uh, five tacos. And uh, we wish you a great night and a beautiful tomorrow.
That was cool, Dad.